Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Um, today, I want to go over some more HP tuner. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Um, today, I want to go over some more HP tuner stuff. And it's occurred to me that there's a few misconceptions and some stuff that people just don't know about HP tuners that I feel like they should. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started. Let's just jump right into it. To start with, the HP Tuner software itself is free. That's the number one thing I feel like people should know. If you want to learn about how to do HP Tuners and how it works, you, you can just go here to the HP Tuner site, download this. I'm upstairs on my new PC. I don't actually have HP Tuners installed up here. So I'll go through this just like I was you guys. But in order to have the software to open tunes, look at tunes, make tables, make changes, sorry, not tables, make changes, um, that's all free. The only thing that costs is the hardware and when you actually want to save. Um, so you accept the EULA agreement, install it, it does its thing. In order to access the tune repository, you have to have an account with HP Tuners. Um, so I'll go ahead and log in here. I already have an account. If you don't, you can just register an account. It's not a big deal. And then as soon as your account comes up on the left, you'll see the tune repository. And then down here, you can look for what you want to look for. So we're going to go away from that for the moment. So we'll go search down here. Now you got to watch why I struggle with it. But that's okay. Because you guys can struggle with me. Let's see it in here. VCM Suite. All right. So the, the part that, make, that allows you to tune is the editor. We won't get into the scanner for now. Open, open the sample. We'll try this P01. Um, so now that this is open, you can see it up here at the top of the screen that it's open. You can click the OS tab to learn about the different modifications you can do to this particular code. Um, they're all a little bit different. These are custom OSs. When you hear people talk about three bar OSs or real time tuning OSs, so this particular one, if this were yours and you had just read it, it can do speed density with enhanced real-time tuning. It can do two bar with real-time tuning. It can do three bar with real-time tuning. And it can do one bar math with real-time tuning. Um, and these are modifications you can apply. Over here in the engine, we'll... it shows you that it's for a 5.7, it's for an LS1. Um, in the trans general, it tells you what trans type it's set up for. Um, so another thing that people don't know, like see how I can open this and play all around? I can go into the VE table, I can see what it looks like, I can change this by 50% because I'm crazy. Um, I can do things if I want to to it. Until I try to save it, it's not going to freak out. Um, that's the only time it asks you to actually license anything. So we say yes, and it's going to say you don't have a license for this file, blah, 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 blah. Um, so we'll just cancel that. Now, another thing that people, I feel like people need to know, um, say you want to segment swap this, right? This is kind of where the tune repository comes in. So we'll look for the year 2002 um, and we want this OS number. In order to do segment swaps, the OS number has to match. I was trying to cheat and copy it, but I guess I'm not gonna be able to. Um, in order to do segment swaps, you see right here where I've already looked for one and it remembers it. So what I do is I just put the model year number and then I type the OS number into the uh, tune repository. 
And that's where I start first. So this one has a T56, this is a 4L60. There we go, 4L80, this is a stock tune file. I don't know what all this means, so I'm gonna avoid it. And we'll just download this one. And then it gives you a disclaimer that, hey, you know, you can blow up your junk. You click the link, it downloads the file. Over here in HP Tuners, you go to the Compare tab. You open a Compare File. Mine's in the Downloads folder. There it is. Now I can do Segment Swapper. So, see how that opened right up? We want to copy the transmission and the transmission diagnostic. So we're going to check both of those, hit import segment swaps, close, and it's not going to let me do anything because I don't have a license. But if I had a license, you would see that change. If you want to go into the tune repository, and just look around and see what you can find that's totally okay like you can just go i don't know so we go o2 and just everything every o2 in there let's see what comes out of this you got a ws6 one you got a camaro ss one you got a camaro with headers stock stock here's an 85 millimeter uh, math airflow. Here's one for long tubes. Here's one for long tubes and a cam. So let's download this one. Doesn't matter that the OS doesn't match for this particular thing. We're going to go in here. We're going to open the compare file. We're going to go to downloads. So now what you can do, like if you didn't know how to tune for your cam and I gave you a copy of my tune file and said, here, use this you wouldn't license it because that's a waste of money. What you do is you use the compare function up here. So you open your stock one, you open mine, and then you go in here, for instance, to the general, to the engine tab, airflow, general, the main VE. Up here, the little blue dot is your main file. So this would be your file, right? The red dot is my file. Here we can see the differences. And on this particular one, the difference is, is almost nothing. He, he didn't tune the VE table, which isn't normal. Um, so we go into idle table. He just bumped the idle way up. So see, this is not a tune that I, I would suggest you copy, but you can. You can go, well, let me try to find one that's a little, we'll try to find one that's a little more different, has wider, wilder changes. This one says it's had a bunch of changes, true duels, blah, blah. Uh, I'm trying to find something that's a little bit wilder. Okay, here we go. This is a Whipple with 10 pounds of boost. Here we go. This is a cam, a, a fairly sloppy stage two-ish cam. Um, it's got a cold air intake, blah, blah, blah. So we'll try this one. So you download it again, you go back over to HP tuners, up to compare or to close the compare file, click it again, open a compare file. And you'll have to do this. Like you'll just have to go through, um, until you find something that's what you want. So in the VE table, here's the stock one that represents yours if you own this Camaro. And here's the change one. You can see that it's big changes. And I can see that this is actually tuned appropriately for a cam because he pulled a bunch of fuel out down low. He added it in. So what you can do up here is hit show differences. And it shows you where the differences are. And if you're crazy or if you just absolutely trust it, you can click the whole table, put zero, hit equals, and you now have this guy's tune table, VE table, or you can undo it. And if you're just trying to learn, 
what I recommend is going in this way to try to learn, right? And seeing what he changed versus the stock. So any of the tables that are different are gonna show up green like this, right? So the main VE is different. The mass airflow calibration is different. Um, and that's how you learn. You figure out what he changed and why he changed it. The idle's different by quite a bit. Again, there's no need for these things to idle so high. I don't, these people are crazy. And that's why you should learn <laughs> because I, by knowing, I know that that idle's too high. It doesn't make any sense. Um, base running airflow should be different for a cam. You see it's quite a bit different here. It's wildly different down below in parking neutral. I don't know why that is. Um, this might be a manual transmission car, I guess. Spark, when you look at the spark tables, um, we can see what is high octane, low octane table is. So here's your table, it represents the stock. Here's his table. He's got some spark pulled out down low. Some added in in the middle. Here's the difference, I have the differences on right now. So this is a way that you can compare changes and learn what people are changing and try to figure out why they're changing it, right? And there's some good resources out there. The HP Tuners forums are good. There's an HP Tuners Facebook group. Um, Coat Rope Garage, I think everybody knows about now on YouTube, does a great job, but he kind of blows past the basics a little bit. Um, so there's some good resources. And, and go to these places and ask, like, hey, why, why did this guy change this table? Like, what's going on with that? Why would he do that? What's the purpose of it? Um, that's how you learn. And those kinds of questions aren't stupid. Popping in and saying, what all do I need to change to chew my, that, that's a stupid question. That's the kind of stuff nobody wants to deal with. Nobody wants to hold your hand from start to finish. But if you come in and you say, why would somebody change the ECT correction table? And, and what does it mean? Why would they change the overspeed and underspeed? And, and what this does your idle, by the way, but what does it mean? And why would they do it? I can respect that, right? Like, I'm happy to help you. I, I can respect that you're trying to learn. Um, if you pop up and you're like, oh, what all do I need to change? If somebody got a tune, like, no, go pay for a tune, man. Get the fuck out of here. Um, anyway, I think I'm going to leave that at, at, at that. That's basically how you would do a segment swap, how you can use the VCM editor for free, even though, you know, to learn as a learning tool to get into it. You don't have to pay for changes every time you go back in. I, I have people, my nephew, I tuned his truck a couple of years ago and he comes back for changes every once in a while. He changed his rear axle ratio. I changed his shift points for him. I don't, he doesn't have to pay again. Um, my, my own truck, I go in and make changes whenever I have a license for that file. So as long as you have a license for the file, you, once you license the file, you can keep changing it. I guess the one warning that I would give you is make sure if you want to run an 80 or you want to run flex fuel, make sure that there's a license, a, a segment that you can swap to do what you want to do before you license it, because that's, that's how people waste money. But like, you don't have to license these, these tunes that you download off the repository or off the sloppy, uh, tune cabinet wiki, whatever he's calling it nowadays. If you don't know about this, Matt Happel has this set up. Um, tune repository. I think he has it here in this. Nope. It's gone from there now. Oh, it's in a Google Drive now. So he has this set up here and these, you can see the HPT ones are, uh, here's one for a six liter with a cam and 92 octane two. And it made, you know, so you can download this. Matt has it up here so you can download it and you can see what what he changed and, and wonder why he changed it and judge him accordingly. Um, so hopefully that helps people understand some things that I feel like the, the general car public doesn't understand about HP tuners. Um, you don't have to pay to download the software. You don't have to pay to learn the software, or go in and play with it. And you don't have to license every file you look at and you can just copy tables from an unlicensed file to a licensed file. That's the summary, and you can copy, uh, you can segment swap without paying any extra too. 
So that's the Cliffs Notes. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment. And I'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.